This is the second lecture on iterative deepening depth first search. We've gone through an example of uh, iterative deepening search on a um, sample tree, which is shown here again. You can see the full ordering from that previous example of nodes. At depth bound zero, which is the first iteration, uh, we simply go through the single node, the root node, at uh, start state at uh, depth zero. We reach the depth bound immediately, and so we don't uh, expand it further. At depth bound 1, we repeat the work from before. We expand the node at depth 0 yet again. We also visit its children at depth 1, B, and C. And you can see off to the left, uh, there is a running total of the number of times we're uh, visiting nodes at the various levels. At depth bound 2, we repeat the work from the previous iterations down to bound 2. We've visited the nodes at depth 0 a total of three times at this point. We visited the nodes at level 1 twice, and we've visited the nodes at depth bound 2 once so far. And finally, at depth bound 3, we do a depth bounded search through the entire tree that we've shown here. At depth bound 3, uh, we revisit the nodes at level zero for a total of four times now. We revisit the nodes at depth one a total of three times. We revisit the nodes at depth two now a total of two times over the entire search. And we visit the nodes at depth three for the first time, one time total. So if we take a look at the complexity of iterative deepening search, you can see at the left-hand column shows levels 1, 2 through k minus 1 and k. In our previous example, k was 3. And you'll notice that this table doesn't show level 0, uh, which is fine. This doesn't change any of the basic arguments that this table is intended to summarize. Um, in iterative deepening search, which is the third column, which I've highlighted, um, you'll remember that at the deepest level, k equals 3, we only visited that level once. Uh, level 0, which isn't shown here, we actually visited k plus 1 times. But at level 1, as the table shows, we visited that k, in our example, 3 times total. And if b is the branching factor, in the previous example, the branching factor b was equal to 2, but in general it was much larger than that for non-trivial searches. Um, the number of nodes at level 1 was simply b, at level 2 was b squared, and at level 3, which was our value for k in the previous example, it was 2 cubed. In contrast, if we look at breadth-first search, breadth-first search, which is the second column, only visits the nodes at level 1 once. It visits the nodes at level 2 once. It visits the node at every level, including, in our example, the final level, k, exactly once. So it's visiting nodes fewer times, once in each case, rather than repeatedly in the, the cases of higher levels for iterative deepening search. Nonetheless, the time complexity uh, asymptotically is the same if we consider b as a constant. Here we highlight uh, breadth-first search as summary total nodes expanded is something greater than b to the k. At each level, we're looking at the, the nodes once. So we sum that up and we get a value which is greater than or equal to b to the k. Um, if you take a look at the third column summary, uh, which is the summary for iterative deepening search, you'll note that if we sum that up, we get a value which is less than or equal to b to the k times some constant. And this is left as an exercise. You can actually look in the pool mackworth book to see the derivation b to the k times some constant. The constant in this case is b divided by b minus 1 squared. Again, we're considering b the branching factor, which in our example was 2, as, uh, as a constant. The complexity is still the same, big O, b to the k in both cases. So iterative deepening search is certainly doing more work, but it's interesting to note that asymptotically, uh, its time complexity is not greater than uh, breadth-first search. And its space complexity, again, is much less than breadth-first search. The space complexity is not summarized here, but again, for iterative deepening search, is linear in the path length. For breadth-first search, it's exponential in the path length.
This is the algorithm for iterative deepening search from the Pool and Mackworth slide set. It's slightly different than the algorithm shown in the uh, text, but it's essentially the same. At the bottom, we see iterative deepening search underlined in green, and it's using DB search, depth bounded search, as a uh, subroutine. You'll notice that there's a global variable called natural failure, which is referenced a total of four times uh, in this code. Uh, it's declared as Boolean at the very top one. If you look under ID search there at the bottom, uh, natural failure is initialized to true. And iterative deepening search is, if you take a look at that repeat until, it's going to be doing repeated depth bounded searches each time incrementing the depth bound by one on successive iterations. When we return from depth bounded search, we want to distinguish three cases. Uh, one, um, you'll notice in depth bounded search at the top, if we ever find the goal, uh, we simply report the path to the goal. But if we return from depth bounded search uh, and fail to find a goal, we want to distinguish whether we fail to find it because we hit all natural dead ends. That is, we hit only nodes that had no successors or neighbors. Or was there at least one path in which we failed to proceed because we hit the depth bound, but in fact, along that path, and there may be many, um, there were actually neighbors that we could have explored with a deeper depth bound. So this global variable natural failure is intended to signal the reason that we might have failed. Um, we set natural failure to true just before entering depth bounded search. If in depth bounded um, we actually hit the depth bound, but the node uh, that we've hit at that depth bound actually has neighbors that we should explore, we set natural failure to false so that when we return, ID search knows that it needs to search yet deeper. If we've gone all the way through depth bounded search and we've never reset natural failure to false, we know that we've hit only dead ends, uh, natural dead ends in our depth bounded search. And ID search would simply exit with a failure uh, because natural failure was still true after calling depth bounded search. Just a couple comments about iterative deepening search as given in the slide deck of Google and Mapworth. Um, the first, which is in red at the top in depth bounded search, we would almost certainly want to swap those tests if goal um, or if we'd hit a bound limit. Checking to see whether something is a goal, a node is a goal, can be very expensive. Um, and so we probably want to put the goal check second and then exploit a short-circuited AND so that uh, we first check the bound limit. If, in fact, uh, we're not at the bound limit, then uh, we don't even have to check uh, to see whether something is a goal. You'll note, too, that the algorithm specifies that we return a path, not simply n sub k, but the path that we found through n sub k. You note in blue, uh, labeled 3, that uh, because we're doing repeated depth-first searches, the frontier is implemented as a stack. In their code, depth-bounded search is recursive, and so the stack is implicit in the recursive call records that we're seeing on the runtime stack. You should know about... Um, the runtime stack from perhaps programming languages of some earlier course. A final comment in green, that uh, only checking for goldness when the bound is zero would not be something you would want to do if DB search were standalone. That is, if you were having a depth bounded search outside the context or independent of iterative deepening, you would be checking for uh, goldness regardless of depth bound. In fact, you might even question why we do a check uh, of bound equals zero, even in the context of iterative deepening search. And again, the only reason that you might want to do that is if you swap the order of the tests, goal check and bound, and put bound first, uh, before you do an expensive check for goalness, you can do a very cheap check for bound.